Well, once again, I'm going up. I don't know if you can see that. This is the way to get up onto this rim right here. Didn't bring the dogs today. They were too tired from yesterday. And uh, my feet are pretty sore. We did about 18 and a half miles in that canyon stuff. Uh, but I wanted to check this area right here. So anyway, I hope we get up here. Have a good day. Hope we get up that safely. And then back down it safely. Anyway, let's go see what happens. Well, I'm up here on the top. There's been some boot tracks, but most of them have been like before the last moisture, so they've been pretty early during the closure. Um, but there's good elk sign. I'm staying off the tops where everybody else seems to have walked, but I'm hitting these benches, these draws like this. Uh, there's good sign. Anyway, I'm moving through here and uh, look up here. like hard white good six be sweet to match that up yeah that's just a good solid bull around here a little bit and see if we can't turn up the other side. Still looking for the other side, but that'd be a nice one to match up. Good bull. Uh, you'll notice I like to hunt these creek bottoms because uh, you find a lot of horns down here, right, where them bulls hit the bottom, and then it jars them going up, knocks horns off. So the only problem is they'll drop one antler right there in the bottom, the other one they'll carry sometimes for a while, so you don't... What I've noticed is they're either both laying there, or you just don't find the other side. But this is a good-looking bench, and so far, knock on wood, there's no boot tracks down here. There's some up on the top. Uh, but uh, let's see if we can't find some more. Good bull. So I have a couple newer pairs of boots. I've been trying out these Zamberlands and the Merrells I was wearing yesterday. I've worn them each about three or four times. And I can tell you this, so far I hate these Zamberlands. They're uncomfortable, they're boxy. I had to add a insole just to get them to almost fit my feet. The Merrells, you slip them on, they're like socks. The only plus to these, they don't come unlaced. They don't come unlaced. The Merrells come unlaced about every half hour, no matter what I do, no matter how I tie them. So, but these, not impressed so far. We'll see how they wear, how they last, but uh, not impressed. But anyway, back to shed hunting. Check this out. I don't think it's a real big one, but I looked over here and I was like, man, that can't be a log laying there. I 
been there in a while. Completely buried. Young bull, but uh, good genetics. Do some poking around here. See if the other side's not here someplace. I don't know if you can see him, but there's there's a bull over there. I just saw him slipping through the trees. Shed bull. Looked like a big bull. So I just watched him kind of go up and over the hill there. There's another one right here low. Uh, I was kind of waiting for them to get off that bench so I could go look at it and looked over here to my left. Man, them elk like to be in this thick crap. Chalk, chalk, chalk. All right. Horn to the horn. And with any luck, there'll be some browns over there. Give them some time to get out of there. There's another little one down here on this bench, busted. Man, that's chop, chop, chop. Huh. Well, at least it shows us nobody else is hitting these benches. Well, my camera died. Found one more antler, another one in a creek bottom. This one had gone off of a waterfall and was piled up in the bottom in some brush. Uh, another white one. That was five for today and six for yesterday, which are pretty good days for me. If I can find six elk horns, that's a darn good day. Um, just a word, I mean, you kind of see where I'm hunting. Uh, because of the way shed hunting is anymore, at least around here, everybody's out there. Everybody's out there walking, looking for antlers. And the only way you're going to be successful is, I mean, one, yeah, you got to put on miles. you got to put on miles and miles and miles and miles. I did 18 and a half, I think, yesterday and probably close to that today in rough, rough country. <clears throat> but what I do I mean sometimes I know exactly who I'm behind because I've been behind them before I've seen their boot tracks and I know who's in there and who hunts there what I do is I follow those boot tracks for a while and I learn how they hunt where are they hunting are they hunting the tops are they hunting the bottoms are they hunting benches um after I've figured out what they're hunting and how they're hunting, then I try to go other places in the, in the same area. So yesterday, I got back and hit the truck, and there was a nice guy there. I was putting the antlers in the back of the truck and loading up the dogs. And he said, man, you had a good day. He said, I hiked all day today and only found one. There was boot tracks everywhere. And I said, yeah, I was in boot tracks all day today, too. I just went a little bit further every little spot then the boot tracks went and that's that's what it takes I mean uh, most people hunt the tops where they tend to be feeding the bottoms where they tend to get water and there are antlers there but most people won't follow those benches because they're hard they're thick they require a lot of sometimes they end you got to climb up you got to climb down they're a pain that's where I'm finding the antlers that's the ones people are leaving behind because they don't want to go up there. They don't want to walk that extra. But, I mean, I guarantee you there wasn't 
one out of the five I picked up today that was more than 100 yards away from somebody's boot tracks. And I don't know what they're finding. Maybe they've got packs full and they don't care about checking into the pockets and the holes and the ditches and everything like that. But that's where you got to be. I mean, you got to be where the elk are. You got to put in a lot of miles. But when you get there and there's boot tracks, learn from them. Figure out where they're hunting. If they're not hunting the benches, if they're not hunting the pockets, if they're not hunting those places, that's where you got to go. And and then you just got to understand that nobody picks all of them up. Nobody. Every year I go back to places I was the year before and pick up whites that I missed. And the first 5x6 set brown that I found this year on April 1st, it was 10 feet from a motorcycle track. Somebody had taken a motorcycle and driven back and forth through a clearing and missed them because there was snow on the ground. Um, but that's that's kind of what it takes. You just got to slow down, learn where they're at. In addition to learning where the elk are at, where the elk might be dropping, you might you got to figure out okay, where is this person hunted? Where have they covered? And if you if you're gonna be walking in their boot tracks, walk you know a little slower. Walk look you know you, I still pick up antlers right in people's boot tracks, and I'm, I guarantee you people pick up antlers in my boot tracks. I there's just if you're looking left and the antlers on your right side, I have literally passed antlers by within within two three feet and then turned around and seen them that because i was just looking off over there looking on that that can look at that clearing so anyway just a tip if you get out there and you're not finding anything with boot tracks try to figure out where they're not hitting nobody can hit everything this is big country big big area and uh there's gonna be something missed go find those ones